Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today I'll be continuing the rifle tier list for both EFP and Gamma mod pack for Stalk Anomaly by covering both the 7.62x39 and 9x39 rifles. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to join me when I'm live on Twitch, link is in the description, or drop a comment down below. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I've tried to colour code the weapons on the tier list depending on if they're exclusive to a mod pack. For this video, there are only rifles which are exclusive to the EFP mod pack, so the rifle names will be highlighted blue. 7.62x39 is quite a powerful calibre, being an upgrade from both 5.45 and 5.56. However, it comes at the cost that most guns that shoot 7.62 have high recoil. The two variants are FMG and AP. The AP rounds are extremely powerful against armoured stalkers. Some of the rifles can be rechambered to shoot 5.56, but I wouldn't recommend this unless you are a NATO faction and can get 5.56 rounds easier than 7.62. First up is the classic AK-47, which sucks. The fire rate isn't bad, but you cannot attach a sight and the accuracy is very bad. The only reason why this gun isn't F tier is you can attach an unbarrel grenade launcher, so we'll go into detail. The AK-103 has an OK fire rate and OK sights. It can attach an underbarrel and the accuracy isn't the best. With a 30 round capacity, this gun is rather mediocre and will go into B tier. The AK-104 is the same as the AK-103, but with no underbarrel, and is less accurate, so we'll go into C tier. A variant of the 104 is the AK-104 Alpha. This gun has a great sight selection and OK fire rate. The 30 round magazine isn't bad, but the gun has quite high recoil, so I'll put this gun into A tier. The AKMN has an OK fire rate and an OK sight selection. It also can attach an underbarrel, however, it has low accuracy, making hitting long range shots hard. So this gun will go into B tier. The CAA AK Alpha improves on the AKMN by having an even better selection of sights and a better accuracy. The fire rate is okay and so is the recoil. It is a good gun but doesn't have any really outstanding features, so we'll miss S tier and go into the A tier. Improving the AK Alpha even further is the RD47 ISG. This gun also has the great sight selection and good accuracy but has better recoil and a faster fire rate. It is still limited by the 30 round magazine, but this won't stop this gun from being S tier. The AKMSN is a step back in most ways. The sight choice is okay, the fire rate is okay, but the accuracy is significantly lower. It is slightly redeemed by the underbarrel launcher, but this gun will go into B tier. Taking another step backwards is the AKMS. This gun is similar to the AKMSN, but does not have any scopes or underbarrel. I will put this gun into D tier. The AKS 47 is the same as the AKMS, so we'll also go into D tier. The Grozer shoots 9x39, but the Grozer 1 variant is chambered in 7.62x39. This gun is quite good as it has a high fire rate and accuracy, but the main advantage of this gun is the integrated grenade launcher. The issue with this gun is the high recoil and only one scope option. Furthermore, this scope cannot be used with the grenade launcher as it blocks the sight, so this gun will go into B tier. Exclusive to EFP is the MK47. It has a decent fire rate, accuracy, and great scopes. But this gun suffers from a lack of an underbarrel and high recoil, so we're going to A tier. Another EFP exclusive is the RD704. This gun is very similar to the MK47 as it has the same fire rate, recoil, and no underbarrel. This gun does have slightly less recoil, but is still too high for it to go into S tier, so the RD will go into A tier. I have already expressed my opinions on LMGs and Stalker in the 556 video, so I won't talk about it now. But the RPD isn't great. It has no sight options and no underbarrel. The fire rate is average and the iron sights aren't the worst. This gun would be F tier if the iron sights weren't okay and the 100 round mag capacity. So we're going to D tier. If you decrease the mag capacity to 45 and make the iron sights harder to use, you get the RPK. Aside from the mentioned drawbacks, this gun is similar to the RPD. It is clear that this gun will go into F tier. Contrasting is another EFP weapon, STV380. This gun has great sights. It also has a decent fire rate and accuracy. The magazine is even slightly bigger at 35. This gun would be S tier if it weren't for the high recoil, so we'll go into A tier. If you make the SKS automatic, you get the Type 63. This gun should be avoided at all costs. It has no sights, a 20 round magazine, but the worst part is a recoil. It is impossible to use this gun. This is another F tier weapon. The last EFP exclusive and last 7.62x39 weapon is the VPO 136. And how else to end with another terrible weapon? It has no sight options, no underbarrel, bad recoil, and low accuracy. And to make things even better, it is only semi automatic. 
This is yet another F tier weapon. Now moving on to the 9x39, this is a very powerful round. Its main advantage is its high penetration. There are two round types, SP5 and SP6, with SP6 having very high penetration, but the SP5 rounds will still go through most Stalker's armour. However, this ammo is subsonic, meaning it travels quite slow for a bullet. This can make long range shots harder to hit. You can master the ability to compensate for the increased bullet drop and speed, but I recommend only using this gun for close range to mid range fights. Rather use a supersonic round for long range fights. First 9x39 weapon is the 9A91. This gun has a fast fire rate and low recoil. The sight selection is decent, but has a fairly low mag size at 20. This gun will go into B tier. The regular Groza is fairly similar to the 9A91. They both have a good fire rate and a 20 round magazine. But like the 7.62 variant, it has an integrated grenade launcher. But again, it only has one scope and the scope can't be used with the grenade launcher. I will also put this gun into B tier. Next is the ASVAL and ASVAL Modern. These guns have a high fire rate and low recoil. The accuracy is okay, but the magazine size is quite rough at 20, especially considering the fire rate. So these guns will go into A tier. The ASVAL Tactical is the same as the previous guns. It has a slightly worse selection of scopes, but now has a laser. This isn't big enough of a change to not also go into A tier though. With a fast fire rate is the SR3M. This gun has good accuracy and quite a big mag capacity of 30 for a 9x39 weapon. This gun would be S tier if it weren't for the poor sight options, so it'll be an A tier. The VSS is not a great rifle. It does have a high accuracy and low recoil, but only has a 20 round capacity. This gun is meant to be used as a DMR, but there are multiple other 9x39 rifles which do this better. So this gun will go into C tier. Speaking of doing the VSS's job better is the VSS Savant. This gun has similar stats to the previous gun, but with better sights and a 20 round capacity. This is better, but not S tier worthy, so we'll go into A tier. Solving this issue is the RD 9x39 ISG. This gun again has the same stats as the previous gun, but now has a 30 round capacity and a grenade launcher. This is enough to make this gun an S tier. The VSS Merc is practically the same as the RD 9x39, but without the grenade launcher. However, I don't think this is enough to drop this gun out of S tier. Finally is the VSK-94, and this may be quite anticlimactic, but this gun is identical to the 9A91, so we'll also go into B tier. So that was my rating of all the 7.62x39 and 9x39 rifles in both EFP and Gamma. What do you think? If you think otherwise about any of my choices, feel free to come join me when I'm live on Twitch. Link is in the description. Else drop a comment down below. While you are down there, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.